Hello everybody and welcome to another video here on the Cinema Speak YouTube channel. My name is Brad, I am the host of the Cinema Speak podcast, and on today's video, uh, something quick, something dirty, we are just going to be doing a quick Kino unboxing. I love Kino, they just had their October sale wrap up, and we've got a nice package right here, nice big package right here that I am ready to unbox. Now you gotta love Kino, their sale prices are incredible, we're talking $10 for some of these Blu-rays when they're on sale. I mean, say what you will about Kino, but you ain't seeing those prices from Scream Factory or Criterion, even Arrow. Come on. Nobody goes as cheap as Kino. Now, this is a bit of a mystery unboxing because honestly, I don't remember what I purchased in this sale. I made the purchase a few weeks ago. This package came maybe last week and I just haven't gotten around to recording the video yet. So this, I don't really remember what's in here. So it's going to be fun for everybody. Now you might be thinking, well, Brad, if you don't remember what you purchased, should you have really spent the money on it in the first place? It doesn't sound like it was a good investment. It's something you don't even remember that you bought. Well, to that I say you're forgetting the three most important words when it comes to Blu-ray purchasing, and that's buy, buy, buy. Taking a page out of uh, Justin Timberlake and uh, In Sync, if you know what I'm saying there. But anyway, we've got our package right here, as you can see. Uh, very nice, what would you call it, uh, padding in the box. I'm not getting a lot of movement here, which is nice. Now, I will say, if you can see, there does seem to be a little bit of damage to the box there. It was taped pretty tightly, so hopefully there's no issues there. We got a little bit of a crinkly, you know, the box has been pushed a little bit. But let's just dig in, just kind of look at what we got going here. Slice this bad boy open without damaging the blues inside. But anyway, we pop it open. Uh, we got the bubble wrap right there. Oh, look at that. It's like a 3D book. It just pops right out. Love it. Get that. Get it out of here. All right, what do we got here? What what shit do we got here? All right. Starting off with... Oh, I, I do remember ordering this. This one was one that I remember. We got Death on the Nile. Death on the Nile. What a cast. I mean, like, let's see here. We got Betty Davis, George Kennedy, Maggie Smith, David Niven, Mia Farrow, stacked cast. And of course, we do have Kenneth Branagh's uh, version of Death on the Nile coming out later this year, which I believe stars Kenneth Branagh. Uh, I think uh, Gal Gadot's in there. There is an actor who we won't talk about anymore, but he's in there as well. Anyway, I've never seen uh, any version of this film, I don't think. So it'll be cool to watch this. Now, the, the question here is, though, do you watch this version from 1978 before seeing the new Kenneth Branagh version? Or should you go into the Kenneth Branagh version blind so that, you know, the mystery is uh, retained? Get this wrapping out of there. Pop it open. Very nice. We got some reversible artwork right there. Ooh, that's pretty good. So just a nice little set there. Uh, not a ton of bonus features. That is one thing that uh, I found with Kino. There, not a ton of bonus content, but you know, just putting these movies out on blue, fairly cheap prices in their sales. What am I kidding? Not fairly cheap. Extremely cheap prices in their sales. You can't beat it. So boom, death on the Nile, had to pick it up. Next one we've got is, this one does have a slipcover, Deep Star 6. Deep Star 6, this is one of those sort of underwater monster movies, creature features, if you will. Never seen Deep Star 6, um, but it does seem like it would be right up my alley. I'm, I'm a big fan of monster movies, creature features, eat em ups as I like to call it. So we're gonna dig in, be very mindful of the slipcover here because we don't want to accidentally damage it. I have done that before with scissors. You just get so excited trying to dig in and you accidentally nick the side of the slipcover and then, uh, you know, that's that's just a real bad day. But here we pop the slipcover off underneath, same artwork. Not a bad slip, not bad. Um, and let's see what's inside. Boom, we got more reversible artwork. Kino just killing it. Look, that is some good artwork right there. I like both art. I like both versions of the art, you know, not bad. Um, and this one actually does have quite a few bonus features. So Kino, I take back what I just said about your bonus features. This one got a couple of audio commentaries, new interviews with uh, creature effects and makeup artist. 
uh, interview with some actors, stunt coordinator. Uh, oh, Kane Hodder of Friday the 13th fame is a stunt coordinator on this. And of course, uh, this film is uh, directed by Sean S. Cunningham, who I do believe directed the very first Friday the 13th film. So nice little connection there. Never seen Deep Star 6, but I'm very excited to check it out. And I'm glad that I got it with the nice, sexy slipcover. Mm, gotta love that. Mm, so good. Next up, we got a movie. I was hoping this would have a slipcover, so kind of uh, sad that this does not have one. I was really banking on that. But anyway, it's Buried Alive, directed by Frank Darabont, which I do believe is a TV movie. Uh, who stars in this one? Who are these actors? Yeah, Jennifer Jason Lee and William Atherton. Um, now, this movie's interesting to me because I don't think I've seen this film, but I have a very distinct memory of a television movie that features some sort of people getting buried alive, and I can distinctly remember, like, the final shot of the movie, and it does involve some some buried aliveness. Some buried alive in hap some bur some buried alive ness happening, if you will. So I'm curious to watch this, and I I never was able to figure out what that film is where I have that like final shot just like implanted in my brain. So I want to watch this, see if that this is the film that I'm thinking it might be because just with the title Buried Alive and it's a TV movie, wouldn't be surprised if I saw it on TV. I don't know. We'll see. I it could be a totally different movie I'm thinking of. Um, nothing fancy on the inside there. Not bad artwork there. It's not too bad. And, uh, we got an audio commentary with, uh, entertainment journalist and author Brian Reisman and, uh, interview with actor William Atherton. This was another one light on the bonus features. Uh, but hey, I'm very excited to check this out. Of course, Frank Darabont, you know, he's a fairly prolific director, even if he's only made a handful of films. So worth owning an early film in his filmography just for that alone. And I'm hoping this is the movie I'm thinking it is because that will be like a discovery, like 20 some years in the making. I don't know how old I was when I saw this, but I was pretty young. All right, we've got a Code Red release. Of course, uh, Kino and Code Red kind of partner on certain uh, titles and well, Code Red, uh, I guess I don't know what their fucking relationship is. Code Red puts makes the Blu-rays, you know, and everything. And I think Kino just helps distribute them, whatever. Anyway, this is The Great Alligator. The Great Alligator from Code Red. Again, I've said it before. I said it in this video and I'll say it again. I love creature features. I get off on that shit, all right? I love watching people get eaten. Sue me. Eat em ups are one of my favorite genres. Even the bad ones I enjoy. And uh, this one actually looked from, I, I watched the trailer on YouTube just to see what I was getting into. And uh, this one actually looked pretty fun. I, I like the premise and the fact that I believe uh, the, the alligator, the, the titular great alligator is some sort of a god. It's a god. It's an alligator god. So you know it's not fucking around. But yeah, I'll want to check this out. Nothing uh, on the inside there. No reversible artwork. But uh, yeah, very cool. Some pretty decent uh, interviews here. Um, yeah, several interviews. Don't think there's an audio commentary, unfortunately. But hey, take what you can get. And uh, I still have not watched my Killer Crocodile 1 and 2 from Severin. So I got a lot of croc and alligator action to dig into, which I'm very excited for. And finally, some would say I saved the best for last because we've got a 4K title here. That's right, a fucking 4K title. It is Spaceballs on 4K. That's right, Kino did put out Spaceballs. I love Spaceballs. I watched this movie a ton in my childhood. And uh, I don't think I ever owned it on Blu-ray for whatever reason. It's one of those movies that I've watched so many times and I watched it like so many times at a young age that I don't even really need to rewatch this. Like I almost know this movie beat for beat, it seems like. But you know, you gotta see how it looks in 4K. You gotta check it out. And I've heard it looks pretty good. So I'm very excited to check this one out. Now, unfortunately, the slipcover no longer available. And I have a bit of a thing where I really like having slipcovers on my 4K. I go out of my way to try and purchase them with slipcovers whenever possible. So I was torn. I was like, should I get this? Should I not? Should I? Because now I've got another 4K in my collection that doesn't have a slipcover. But at a certain point, you got to just 
You gotta just fucking live your life, man. Like, who fucking cares? Nobody gives a shit except me. And, you know, you can always buy it on eBay or some shit, buy the fucking slipcover. I mean, $15 for this 4K is a great deal. Um, so let's pop it open. Looks like we've got it on 4K and Blu-ray. Two discs set right there. Um, and it looks like there... Is there reversible artwork? What do we got going on here? Uh, yeah, there is reversible artwork, which, uh... <laughs> Not bad. But yeah, Kino just absolutely killing it with their 4Ks lately. I did purchase the Silence of the Lambs on 4K from Kino. Uh, did I say Criterion earlier? I might have fucking said Criterion at some point. We're talking Kino. I did purchase uh, Silence of the Lambs from Kino. Looks amazing. Looks gorgeous. I'm hoping this looks the same. And cool. Glad to have another Kino title on 4K in my collection. I mean, Kino just keeps pumping out these 4Ks, and I am absolutely loving it. So that was my small Kino unboxing. As you can see, the box is empty. It's fucking empty. <coughs> Boom. We're good. We're done. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Of course, uh, if you like this video, subscribe for more. We've got unboxings. We've got reviews. We got a whole ton of Blu-ray, 4K, all that shit. So uh, check out all our other YouTube videos. And if you like uh, what we're doing here, check out our weekly podcast. It's the Cinema Speak podcast. You can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find your shows. Just search for Cinema Speak, and you'll find us there. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.